In the previous lecture, we calculated the Laplace transform and the region of convergence of unit step signal. And in this lecture, we will obtain the Laplace transform and region of convergence of DC value and signum function. So let's start with the first signal in this lecture, which is DC value. And let's say the time domain signal FT is equal to DC value A naught and we are required to calculate its corresponding Laplace transform Fs. Now there are two ways to find out the Laplace transform of DC value. The first method is simply using the formula of Laplace transform and the second method is using the Laplace transform of unit step signal. I will give you both the methods. In method number one, we will simply use the formula of Laplace transform we know the bilateral Laplace transform is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity the time domain signal which is A0 in this case multiplied to the integral kernel E power minus ST. A0 is a constant with respect to time T so we will take it out of integration and the integration of E power minus ST is equal to e power minus st divided by minus s. The lower limit of integration is minus infinity and the upper limit is infinity. Minus s is not having any term of time t. So we will take it out and we have minus a naught over s and we have e power minus s infinity minus e power minus s minus infinity or we can write e power plus s infinity plus s infinity we know s is equal to sigma plus j omega it is a complex variable and it is equal to sigma plus j omega in this way we have the bilateral Laplace transform equal to minus a naught over s inside the bracket e power minus sigma plus j omega multiplied to infinity minus e power plus sigma plus j omega multiplied to infinity. Now the important part of this particular derivation comes. You have to focus on what I am explaining regarding the different exponentials we are going to get. I can write e power minus sigma plus j omega multiplied to infinity as e power minus sigma multiplied to infinity multiplied to another exponential e power minus j omega multiplied to infinity omega is a finite value it is the angular frequency and when it is multiplied to infinity we will get infinity so we will write omega infinity as infinity Similarly, we will break this exponential as well. We will have e power sigma infinity multiplied to e power j infinity. And we know the Euler's formula. We know e power j theta is equal to cos theta plus j sin theta. So from here we will get, we will get cos infinity minus j sine infinity and from here we will get cos infinity plus j sine infinity and we know sine and cosine have the values between minus 1 and 1 and the value depends on the angle we are having but in this case we are having infinity as angle and infinity is not defined so we don't know what will be the value of cos infinity and sine infinity at infinity but we are sure that value is between minus 1 and 1. This means the value is going to be finite. So e power minus j infinity will give us some finite value. But we don't know about the exact value. Therefore it is also undefined. And the same thing goes for e power j infinity. Now we have to focus on e power minus sigma infinity and e power sigma infinity 
and we are doing this to get the region of convergence because these two exponentials will give us the final region of convergence and it is important to have the region of convergence to comment about the existence of Laplace transform. So let's focus on e power minus sigma infinity first, e power minus sigma infinity. Now there are two possibilities based on the values of sigma. Let's say sigma is positive, it is greater than zero. In this scenario we will have sigma multiplied to infinity giving us infinity and this negative sign we have already. So we have e power minus infinity. And if sigma is negative, this means sigma is less than zero. So we are multiplying a negative value to infinity and this means we are going to get minus infinity. But initially we had e power minus sigma infinity. From sigma infinity we are getting minus infinity when sigma is negative. But this negative sign will make the power positive. So we are going to get e power plus infinity when sigma is negative. Very basic thing to understand. And we know e is greater than 1. So e power infinity will be infinity. Now let's talk about e power minus infinity. We can write it as 1 over e power infinity. And e power infinity is infinity. So we have 1 over infinity. And 1 divided by infinity will give us 0. So 0 is multiplied to a finite undefined value when sigma is greater than 0. And we are talking about the first two exponentials we are having here. So we can say that the Laplace transform is equal to minus a0 over s and 0 is multiplied to e power minus j infinity but this is when sigma is positive. Now we will focus on the second exponential e power sigma infinity e power sigma infinity and it is very easy to understand that we will have 0 when sigma is less than 0 when sigma is negative and we will have infinity when sigma is positive so we will have we will have minus 0 multiplied to e power j infinity and this is when sigma is negative so you can see that we are having two conditions on sigma the two conditions are giving us the finite laplace transform because we don't want the laplace transform to be infinity we want the laplace transform to exist and this is the whole point of having the region of convergence because in a region of convergence the Laplace transform is finite and outside region of convergence the Laplace transform is infinity and therefore we rejected all the values of sigma giving us infinity. We rejected all the values of sigma giving us infinity and therefore we have sigma greater than zero and sigma less than zero. Now to comment about the existence of Laplace transform fs, we need to get the final or common region of convergence and we can have it after plotting the region we will get from sigma greater than 0 and sigma less than 0 and when you plot them in s plane you will find there is no common region of convergence because no portions of the two regions will intersect each other. So this implies no common region of convergence is there for the Laplace transform of TC value A0 and this implies there will be no Laplace transform. So for DC value there is no Laplace transform. The Laplace transform do not exist. Now we will follow the method number 2 to obtain the same result and in method number 2 we will use the unit step signal. We can write a0 as a0 multiplied to 1 and we can write 1 as ut plus u minus t. Now I will open this bracket and we will have a0 ut plus a0 u 
minus t and we know the region of convergence of the Laplace transform of unit step signal ut is sigma greater than 0 and the Laplace transform of u minus t will have region of convergence sigma less than 0 and we are getting this using the property of Laplace transform known as the time reversal property. So when you reverse ut you will have u minus t and in this scenario you will have the Laplace transform as minus 1 over s because 1 over s is the Laplace transform of ut. So we have minus 1 over s as the Laplace transform of u minus t and the region of convergence will be sigma less than 0. So again when you plot the two regions you will find there is no common region. This implies there is no common region of convergence and therefore there is no Laplace transform. And now we will move to our second signal in this lecture and the signal is signum function. And we know the signum function can be written as ut minus u minus t and we know the region of convergence for the Laplace transform of ut is sigma greater than 0 and for u minus t sigma is less than 0. So again there is no common there is no common region of convergence no common region of convergence and this implies there is no Laplace transform. So for DC values and signum function there is no existence of Laplace transform and you can remember one point regarding the DC value. DC values are double sided power signals. They are double sided power signals and all double sided power signals do not have the existing Laplace transform. So this is all for this lecture. I will end it here. See you in the next one.